Shalom, welcome to Tactically Torah. I am Heath Hayes. Today is day 36 of Read the Bible in a Year. And uh, we are in Leviticus chapters uh, 14 and 15, so that's what we're reading today. Uh, we're on page 118 if you want to follow along in the scriptures. Let's go ahead and just, just dive right in. Chapter 14. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought up to the priest, and the priest shall go out of the camp. And the priest shall look and see if the leprosy is healed in the leper. Then the priest shall command, and he shall take for him who is to be cleansed two live and clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command, and he shall slay one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. Let him take the live bird and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop, and dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was slain over the running water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the live bird loose in the open field. And he who is to be cleansed shall wash his garments, and shall shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water, and shall be clean. Then after that he comes into the camp, but shall stay outside his tent seven days. And on the seventh day it shall be that he shaves his hair off uh, his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shaves off. And he shall wash his garments, and wash his body in water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he takes two male lambs, perfect ones, and one ewe, one ewe lamb, a year old, a perfect one, three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, and one log of oil. And the priest who is cleansing shall present the man who is to be cleansed with these offerings before Yahweh at the door of the tent of appointment. And the priest shall take one male lamb and bring it in as a guilt offering, and the log of oil, and wave them as a wave offering before Yahuwah. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he slays the sin offering, and the ascending offering in a set-apart place for the guilt offering, like the sin offering belongs to the priest. It is most set apart, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in the left hand and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahuwah. And the rest of the oil is in his hand. Um, and the rest of the oil in his hand uh, the priest put some of the tip, some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, and on the blood, uh, on the blood of the guilt offering, and the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh. And the priest shall make the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterwards he slays the ascending offering. And the priest shall offer uh, the ascending offering and the grain offering on the slaughter place. And the priest shall make atonement for him and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and unable to afford it, then he shall take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waived. To make atonement for him, and one, tetha, one tenth of an ephah of fine flour, mixed with oil as grain offering, as a grain offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves or two young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, and one uh, shall be a sin offering, and the other a sinning offering. And he shall bring them to the priest on the eighth day for his cleansing. 
uh, to the door of the tent of appointment before Yahweh, and the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall slay the lamb of the guilt offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Then the priest pours some of the oil in the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before Yahuwah. And the priest shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the, on the place of the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed, to make atonement for him before Yahuwah. And he shall prepare... One of the turtle doves or young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, that which he is able to afford, the one as a sin offering and the other as an ascending offering, with the grain offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before Yahuwah. This is the Torah for one who had an infection of leprosy, who is unable to afford his cleansing. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and said to Aaron, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put a plague of leprosy in a house in the land of your possession, then, sh then shall the one who owns the house come and inform the priest, saying, It seems to me that there is some plague in the house. And the priest shall command and they shall empty the house before the priest goes in to look at the plague, so that it is in the house, so that all that is in the house is not made unclean. That makes sense. And after that, the priest goes in to look at the house. And he shall look at the plague and see if the plague is on the walls of the house with the sunken places, greenish or reddish, which appear to be deep in the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house. Uh, to the door of the house, and shut up the house seven days, and the priest shall come again on the seventh day, and look and see if the plague has spread on the walls of the house. Then the priest shall command, and they shall remove the stones with the plague in them, and they shall throw them outside the city into an unclean place. While he lets the house be scraped inside all around, and the dust uh, that they scrape off, they shall pour out in an unclean place outside the city. And they shall take other stones and put them in place of those stones, and take other mortar and plaster the house. And if the plague comes back and breaks out in the house after he has removed the stones, after he has scraped the house and after it's plastered, then the priest shall come back and look and see if the plague is spread in the house. It is an act of leprosy in the house. It is unclean. And he shall break down the house and the stones and its timber and all the plaster of the house, and he shall bring them outside the city to an unclean place. And he who goes into the house all the days while it is shut up becomes unclean until evening. And he who lies down in the house has to wash garments. And he who eats in the house has to wash his garments. However, if the priest indeed comes in and looks at it and sees that the plague is not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. And to, and to cleanse the house, he shall take two birds and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop, and he shall slay one of the birds in the earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the live bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird in the running and in the running water, and shall sprinkle the house seven times. He shall thus cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and the running water, and the live bird, and with the cedar wood, and with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. And he shall let the live bird loose outside the city in the open field. 
and shall make atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the Torah for any infection of leprosy and eruption, and for leprosy of a garment and of a house, and for the sealing and for a scab, I'm, I'm sorry, and for swelling, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the Torah of leprosy. Chapter 15. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aaron, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his flesh, his discharge is unclean. And this is his uncleanness in regard to his discharge, whether his flesh runs with his discharge or his flesh is stopped up by his discharge. It is his uncleanness. Any bed becomes unclean on which he has the dis on which he who the discharge lies, and any object on which he sits becomes unclean. And anyone who touches his bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. He who sits on any object which he who has the discharge set has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. He who touches the flesh of him who has the discharge has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. And when he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides on becomes unclean. And whoever touches any of that which is under him is unclean until evening. And he who is carrying them up has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And anyone who, uh, anyone whom he had, Anyone whom he who has the discharge touches without raise, rinsing his hands in water shall wash his garments and bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. And the earthen vessel which he who has the discharge touches has to be broken and every wooden vessel has to be rinsed in water. And when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing and shall wash his garments and shall bathe his flesh in running water and be clean. And on the eighth day he takes for himself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and shall come before Yahuwah to the door of the tent of appointment and shall give them to the priest. And the priest shall prepare for him, pr prepare for them the one as a sin offering and the other as an ascending offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah because of his discharge. And when a man has an emission of semen, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until evening. And any garment and any leather on which there is semen shall also be washed with water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman lies with a man, and there is an emission of semen, they both shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman has a discharge, and the discharge from her flesh is blood, she has to be in her separation for seven days. And whoever touches her is unclean until evening. And whatever she lies on during her separation is unclean, and whatever she sits on is unclean. And anyone who touches her bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches any object that she sat on has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And if it is on the bed or any object on which she sits, when he touches it, he is unclean until evening. And if a man lies with her at all, and her monthly flow is on him, he shall be unclean seven days, and any bed he lies on is unclean. Uh, and when a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at the time of her monthly separation, when she, dis when she discharges beyond her usual time of monthly separation, 
all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her monthly separation. She is unclean. Any bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge is to her as the bed of her monthly separation. And whatever she, shit, she sits on is unclean as the uncleanness of her monthly separation. And anyone who touches them is unclean and shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count for herself seven days and after that she is clean. And on the eighth day, she takes for herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and shall bring them to the priests to the door of the tent of appointment and the priest shall prepare the one as a sin offering and the other as an ascending offering and the priest shall make atonement for her before Yahuwah for the discharge of her uncleanness. Thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness lest they die in their uncleanness when they defile my dwelling place which is in their midst. This is the Torah for one who has a discharge and for him who emits semen and is unclean. Uh, thereby, and for her who is sick in her monthly separation, and for one who has a discharge, either man or woman, and for him who lies with an unclean woman. Right, tomorrow is Leviticus chapter 16. Shalom.